What does last week's 103 reclaim from the DXY mean for pairs like the euro, the pound, the dollar yen, and also gold, especially as we head into next week's FOMC? That's what we're talking about in today's weekly forecast for the week ending March 22nd, 2024. So let's not waste any time and get right into it here with the DXY. We talked about this a few times last week, but we did get the reclaim above 103 here from the DXY. So you can see where we got a lot of consolidation between these two levels at 102.6 and 103. And clearly the 103 level has been significant over the past few months. It was the range low during this period here before we got the breakout up toward levels like 104.50. So right now we do have a new range between 103 and 103.6 to 103.8 for the DXY. So what does this mean for the dollar as we head into next week and FOMC? Okay, so with FOMC coming up, we know that we have a new range here for the DXY. So I would be surprised if we get a significant move from the dollar before that FOMC on Wednesday. We also have a lot of PMI out of Europe on Thursday. So keep that in mind as well. Um, that is going to affect something like the DXY. So really, if you look here at the DXY, and this is what I've talked about recently as well. If you boil this down, because right now, a lot of people look at this and they see all these levels and it gets a bit confusing. However, if we boil so far this year, Okay, so we have this one back here, that 104.5 level. And as of last week, now we have a potential one down here below 103. And the reason that these are fake outs is if you'll notice, okay, we had this low right here. This was a key level. We got the sustained break below the reclaim back above on this candle. And if you'll notice up here, once again, this was a key horizontal level through here. We got the reclaim above the market established itself above that. We got the close below and the retest as new support and the sell-off. So you can see what's happening here with these fake outs. When you get a fake out to one side of a level like this, the market reclaims it. We got a nice rally back here. Up here, we got a fake out. We got the close back below. We got a pullback. And as of right now, we do have that close above 103, confirming this down here as a new fake out, which could mean a move higher here for the DXY over the coming weeks. Now, the one caveat to this though, is that we do have this area between 103.6 and 103.8. That has clearly been a significant pivot for the DXY over the past few months. So getting long, the dollar at the start of next week is ill-advised because the market closed just below this area. Now, the one thing I will say about last week's move is that you can see here on Thursday, this green candle, we got a very shallow retrace on Friday. So there is that chance that we either get the DXY moving up here first next week, and then we get a pullback or we see a pullback to start the week to kind of fill in this imbalance back here from this breakout candle. Okay, so we've talked about these breakout candles before, how they tend to get at least partially filled. So Thursday's candle is no exception. So again, I think that getting long the dollar early next week is ill-advised just because we are likely to see, you know, in my opinion, a fill down here in this area, either before we get a retest up here or after, especially with that volatility on Wednesday in the form of FOMC. But ultimately though, for the DXY, 103 is going to be support. 103.6 to 103.8 is resistance. A sustained break above this area would be bullish for the DXY toward levels like 104.5. And of course, a sustained break back below 103 down here would be bearish for the dollar. So next up, let's take a look here at the Euro USD on the daily chart. And this was a potentially significant breakdown that we saw last week back below 109. And this coincides obviously with the DXY above 103. So the reason that this is significant is we've talked about this trend line off of that 2022 low at length. All right. So you can see down here off of that 2022 low, we've got all these lows through this area. And you can see where over the past few months, the euro did spend a lot of time below this level with it serving as resistance. Now we did get the reclaim of this area. Okay. On these candles here. So you can see this move right here reclaimed that area. However, Thursday's candle, just like with the DXY, Thursday's candle fell back below that level. Not only that, but we also have this pivot back here, these lows through here and these highs. And again, the market was unable to hold above that. So in my opinion, that is a showing of weakness. And again, we do have FOMC coming up as well as a lot of PMI out of Europe on Thursday. So be careful with this. But as of right now, this to me up here looks like a fake out, similar to the one that started this year. All right, so you can see the highs back here. We got the break back below, okay, retest as new resistance and the sell-off. So as of right now, you know, the market has been very choppy here. So that's kind of the difference between these two, I would say, is that over here, you can see all this white space. This was pretty clean. 
as of recently, over the past few months this year, there hasn't been a lot of clear direction for these markets. So it has been a lot uh, choppier than it was back here to start the year. However, as of now, I have to treat this as a potential fake out with 109 being resistance, 108.65, 1.0865 being support. And below that, we've got 1.08. So the pound is another one too, that kind of confirms what we saw from the dollar last week, where we've talked about these channels at length before. So you can see that going back to the start of 2023, we do have this ascending channel. The market broke down through here. We got a rounded retest of that level here on three different occasions. And since that time, the pound has been very sideways. So it has been difficult to trade, despite the fact that these technicals have held up relatively well. Now, recently, okay, as of a couple of weeks ago, we did get the move above these highs from back here in December and also January and early February. Now, the thing is, we did see the market close back below this. So you can see through here, the market tried to hold the pound, tried to hold above this trend line right here off of these lows, which this level right here runs parallel to this one. And the pound was unable to hold above all of these highs back here, as well as that trend line. Okay, so just like with the euro, we are seeing some weakness here from the pound in that inability to hold above this area. So I talked about this last week, but you can see here with that December high, right here, 1.2825. We got the close below, retest as resistance, and a retest here again on Thursday. Okay, now not only that, but the pound also failed to hold above these highs from back here. So regardless of how you draw this, if you were to draw it across all of these highs right here, so you can see we've got this touch point right here, we've got this one, we've got these highs, this one, and this one. That is a critical level right there for the pound, right there around 1.27 seven, three or so that we did see it close below. Okay. And there was no recovery attempt going into the weekend. So again, this shows weakness for the pound and its inability to hold above these highs from back here. So we'll see how this shakes out with FOMC and all of that PMI um, coming up next week. But as of right now, this area is going to be resistance for the pound and support comes in at these highs around 1.27, but specifically the top of this channel closer to 1.265. So next up, we have the dollar yen, which I covered this at length on Friday, so I'm not going to cover it in too much detail today. Um, but if you look at the weekly chart, we do have this potential ascending triangle that has developed off of that low from back here in 2022, early 2022. And we can also see that we have a critical level up here at 152, which the market failed to test recently. Okay, so a lot of times levels like this will serve as magnets. We didn't see a retest back here, so it kind of makes me think we could see the dollar yen trend higher up there toward that level if the DXY can break above the area we just looked at. Remember, this area between 103.6 and 103.8 is going to be critical. So if we see the DXY reclaim that and the dollar yen can get above this previous range low, okay, all these lows through here, right around 149.7, if it can reclaim this up here within this range, then I think we're looking at a move toward 150.9 as well as that macro level up around 152. Now, just keep in mind, though, that 149.7 is going to be critical resistance here. And as for support, I talked about this on Friday, but we did have the pair reclaim this area around 148.35. So this has been a very clean level on the daily chart here going all the way back toward October of last year. OK, so this area down here is going to be support. We've got resistance coming in up here around 149.7. A reclaim above this would expose those higher levels, of course, a sustained break back below 148.35 would be bearish for the dollar yen. And lastly, before we move on to gold, don't forget to, as I mentioned last week, we have these equal highs up here at 150.9, where the stop losses from that initial high are still intact and markets seek liquidity. So this is another reason why we could see the dollar yen and trend up here in this area over the coming days. All right, so let's wrap up here with gold XAU USD. And I think it's fitting to start here on the monthly time frame simply because of what we've seen here recently from gold, which is a new all-time high. So going all the way back here to the high in 2011, this level right here, this trend line, is what capped gold here on the move in December. So if you'll remember, this was a new all-time high as well for gold. However, the market was unable to hold above these highs from back here, and we got that pullback. Now, as of you know last week's close, we do have the market holding above this level. However, you do have to be a little bit careful because here's where that level comes in. Okay, so you can see that we had resistance right here. 
and we have since seen the breakout. But if you'll look at the four hour time frame, this is a little bit concerning for gold bulls in the sense that we do have the market making these lower highs into this key support. Okay, so a lot of times when you get a market after a significant move like this, making these lower highs into support, it shows that the market is unable to get off of this area. Okay, in other words, it shows that so far sellers are winning the battle here. Now, it doesn't have to move lower because this could just be a wedge pattern here off of these highs. Okay, this could be a wedge here where we get the market, you know, breaking above this sometime next week, right? Breaking above here and then continuing higher up here toward the high. But again, a lot of times when you do get after an extended move like this, you get these lower highs into support. That is a bearish formation. But I think the key thing to watch here next week is going to be this area right here at 2140. Okay, this level is going to be significant. However, this is that trend line we just looked at off of that 2011 high. So if we get gold breaking below here, and especially below 2140 back down here, okay, on a daily closing basis, then that could be bearish toward levels like 2075. Okay, that macro resistance level that we've looked at for the past few weeks. Of course, like I said, if the market can break this resistance and start to push higher, that would be bullish toward these highs. Um, but as of right now, I do think that some caution is warranted from gold, especially considering that it's you know not a guarantee, that's not a perfect correlation. But when you look at Bitcoin starting to break down a little bit, you know Ethereum as well, those markets do tend to move together more often than not. Okay, so you do have to be a bit careful here with this formation above support. But as of now, you know I wouldn't be shorting here because you'd be shorting right into this key support area. If anything, you're looking for a sustained break below 2140 to open up this level down here right around 2075. And alternatively, if we do get a continuation of this toward the high, the market breaks out above here, then ultimately, I mean, you're looking at big round numbers, psychological levels here for gold because there are no key levels above this recent high because this is an all-time high for gold. So coming up with key levels is going to be difficult if we do get a continuation of this, but you're looking at big round numbers, you know, 2250, especially 2300, you know, targets like that. Okay. But for now, like I said, I do think you have to be a little bit careful given the consolidation that we've seen here over the past few days. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for notifications for daily videos. Don't forget to guys claim your 70% off VIP access for daily videos, my help with your trading, and also to see my trades in real time. Check out that link in the description. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you again on Monday.